On this episode of the Mothman and the Bible Belt podcast, West Virginia 80s pop rock retro band Rewind the Walkman are my guests. We talk Rewind the Walkman's February 17th debut show at the Blue Parrot, 80s music, set list selection, whether Hearts and Wilson should regularly belt out, All I Want to Do is Make Love to You, and British singer Paul Young's deteriorating voice. Coming up next. Welcome to the Mothman in the Bible Belt podcast with your host, Buck Fantastic. Cookies. Rewind the Walkman is a West Virginia based pop rock retro supergroup consisting of Dog Soldier and Gold Town singer Justin Johnson, Dead Face Down and Halen guitarist Chad Fisher, Adam D. Tucker bassist and producer Jamie Skeens on bass and keyboards, and Nathan Shrewsbury of The Big Bad, Irreplaceables, Ghost Flea, and Jerks on drums. Jamie Skeens was unable to participate in the podcast interview. He was on holiday in the south of France. Chad and Justin did the podcast last year before the band had an official name. Rewind the Walkman is debuting at the Blue Parrot in Charleston on Saturday, February the 17th at 9.45 p.m. Their opening act is P.D. Bird. The cover is $10. The band encourages folks to come dressed in their best 80s threads. The band is giving away free koozies to the first 75 people through the door. And you can win a $100 gift certificate to Fazio's. Join me, your host, Buck Fantastic, for another exciting episode of the Mothman and the Bible Belt podcast. It's eclectic chit-chat of otherworldly origins. Without further ado, here's Rewind the Walkman. Justin, who came up with the name Rewind the Walkman? We had this collaborative process. I distinctly remember we were just, uh, all of us were throwing things. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Chad, it was Nathan who, that was Nathan's, right? I can't remember. Was it Nathan? I think I I wanted to say Rewind Walkman or Walkman Rewind. Oh, yeah. But then you came up with Rewind the Walkman. Like, yeah. I, we, like that. Yeah, that's how just, it went. I think we kind of, I think we kind of decided on it in the Sisterville High School parking lot. Yeah, we did after we shot that video, actually. Yeah. Nathan, how did this music project come together? Well, Jamie had a an idea to do a thing about uh, doing an Aussie cover, and uh, I don't know who selected who or who came up with who was going to play on what or. We just kind of all did that, and we had so much fun doing the Aussie cover together. Uh, we just decided to keep going and make some videos and record some songs and whatnot. Let's talk about the music videos that you all have released so far for your Wind the Walkman. Who did it all? I mean, did the band do everything, or did uh, you basically, all hire? basically Jamie? <laughs> Yeah, Jamie filmed and uh, and edited all of it along with, um, you know, engineering all the music. Did you get hurt or run over doing your scene in the Power of Love video, <laughs> Nathan? Uh, no, it, it was pretty good, but I think I may have almost fell like once or twice. Yeah, but I think one time you almost fell, and that was it, man. Everything else, you were on it. Other than that, it worked out pretty good. Well, I was moving so fast <laughs> in that Jeep that, uh, you know, it was just, it just shows you Nate's skating prowess, how he was able to to catch up and snatch a hold of that bumper. I mean, I was going every bit of, like, what would you say, Nate? Five, seven mile an hour, probably. Every bit. Every bit. Yeah, and we had to do that part over and over uh one street down from the police department without the police department seeing us do that <laughs> was it complicated getting to film don't you forget about me and sisaville high uh no not really because uh i'm really good friends with the principal there uh gene smith 
And I basically just sent him a text message and told him the idea. He's like, yeah, man, whatever you guys need. So we went there. I think we recorded it uh, in about three hours. Uh, he gave us free reign to do whatever we wanted, and he was in the video. So that's actually him in the video. And I think he added a lot to it that we never even thought of before. So he played mm -hmm. basically himself in the video. Chad, is there an EP or a record in the works for Rwanda Walkman? Uh, no. <laughs> really? No, not yet. Not yet. Well, well I, I, will, I will interject here. Not necessarily an EP or a record, but there are plans for us to uh, record these uh, illustrious remakes that we're doing and to maybe release them uh, individually to stream. Hopefully, I don't know if we'll have, uh, you know, ideally we'll have streaming up before the 17th, but um, I don't know, you know, I don't know if that'll get there or not. We we focused really hard in the past four or five months just on rehearsing the set so we could get it as tight as we possibly could. And so all the other stuff has kind of gone by the wayside, but we're hoping that once we get, you know, the set together and, and whatnot, that, that we'll be able to, to get, get that music or get, you know, get a website, and get the music up, music up available to stream and whatnot. Justin, thus far, you've released covers of Hungry Eyes, Fire Love, Don't You Forget About Me, Take Me Home Tonight, and Take My Breath Away. What can Rewind the Walkman fans expect from you guys on your February 17th Blue Parrot show? I, I feel like it's just going to be a, a real solid trip back in time. I mean, I'm, I'm a big nostalgia guy, I, and I feel like, I feel like Nate and, uh, and Chad are as well. Uh, we all reminisce about, you know, uh, time, maybe simpler times. I'm, I never want to say better times because things aren't aren't real bad now for us, but just easier times and things that that, that make us think of memories that, that make us feel warm and happy. And, and we want to promote that. I mean, for me pers personally, right now, musically, whether it be, you know, Rewind the Waltman or anything I do, I, I want, I don't want to be, um, cantankerous or angsty so much as i want to i want to i want people to have something that that makes them feel hopeful that makes them happy um uh, you know because uh, collectively you know uh, there's a lot of people having rough times out there right now so i think that uh you know that people can expect to come out on the 17th and any show after that and just be ready to have it just to enjoy themselves can you tell us a little bit about PD Bird, your opening act? Yeah, um, I've known John, oh goodness, for PD. For, I think I met him when I was in Morgantown, back when I was playing football at WVU. Um, no, no, I met him before that. He he graduated from Ripley, like I did. and uh, But I got to know him around that time when I was in Morgantown. And uh, uh, John, John's been playing music. Um, for he's been playing for quite some time now he has a, a, a really great following he puts out a lot of content and he he just really he just really enjoys music and uh, uh we just thought it'd be a good pairing you know for a first show i think he he seems like he's pretty excited and ready to have a lot of fun with it too chad will you be rocking out in big eddie's hair a leopard print shirt and shiny black leather pants at this uh <laughs> february 17th show probably not at this one no no, It'd be something along those lines, but I think Nathan will probably be the one to have the uh, outfit more along those lines. <laughs> Nathan, you're known for playing drums in the punk rock scene here in West Virginia. You played in the Big Bad, Irreplaceables, Ghost Fleet and Jerks, and even rock instrumentalist band Crown the Witch. Is playing 80s covers more invigorating than the music you've been previously accustomed to? Um, I wouldn't say more invigorating i would it's, it's something uh it's it's fun to do you know i have it a lot a lot of fun doing it. chad what guitars do you pull from most playing wise um hmm that's a good question uh probably um uh, eddie van halen maybe and steve Vai and randy rhodes are my top three guys what were you all listening to in the 1980s um poison <laughs> nathan all different kinds of stuff um 
probably a lot of 80s hair metal, but uh, also like, uh, I don't know, stuff like Bobby Brown or, uh, you know, some of the other 80s. What about you, Justin? Oh, uh, in the 80s, uh, you know, I've, I've, I mean, I, my roots are, are, are somewhat in just pop in general. I mean, I, if I had to say, yeah, some poison snuck in there. I mean, in the mid '80s, uh, you know, I was just a, just a wee tot. But uh, there used to be this show program on. I think it was NBC or called Friday or uh, Friday Night Video or was it Friday Night Videos? Yeah, you guys remember that? Yeah. Um, so you know, a lot of my earliest experience to music was was through that. I remember watching the Sledgehammer video distinctively on. Uh, Friday night videos and um, of course uh, Super 102 uh, was played in our car quite a bit so whatever was on Super 102 and um, uh, that in the mix of whatever was on WQBE at the time my mom was a big country fan so um, just all kinds of stuff I mean I was all across the board still am I loved a lot of uh, 80s rap also Mm -hmm. yeah me too Justin who gets to pick the songs Rewind the Walkman performs live excuse me is that democracy yeah kind of um you know it 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 ultimately comes down to you know these guys can play anything you know i mean chad can play anything jamie's jamie's like merlin and and nate is just all all over the place he can play anything so you know it really comes down at the end of the day whether or not vocally it's something that fits well with what i can do and whether i can you know, I can sing a lot. I can I can be in a lot of different places vocally, but sometimes things just don't fit. You know, um, so it's 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 pretty much what democracy. I'd say we're just trying to pick any whatever we think is going to be best for the show and 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 the band and what people want to hear and what stuff songs, that n- nobody's heard before live. Really, what songs that you all auditioned for the parrot show on February seventeenth didn't make the cut that you all can talk about um what was the money we were going to try to do beat it i think that's the only one that we really written that right justin and the starship Uh, the starship tune oh yeah uh nothing's going to stop us now from uh starship so why didn't they make the cut the range on a lot of those songs are crazy and i mean some of them take two people to sing which they have a lady's voice and i mean it gets really really high on that vocal range to try to hit and I mean, some of them just don't work out for whatever reason. Nathan, has there been any knockout, dragout fights over set list selection? Oh no, we all just uh, pretty much agree on the songs we're doing. Whatever works, we we know immediately if it works or not. Chad, in 1990, Hart recorded the Mutt Lang pinned "All I Want to Do Is Make Love to You." I love that video. It was one of eight top 20 songs the band recorded that they didn't write themselves in the 80s and early 90s and hates the song and wilson many heart fans love it is it wrong for ann to not put in a set she brought it back in 2017 in her own little solo set after not performing it for nearly 20 years uh no it's not wrong because if she goes out and plays live she's going to have a ton of people that are probably there to hear that song you know and a lot of people might only know that song so i don't think she's wrong at all just just should prolific songwriters be nudged by record companies to record other songwriters work should they be nudged by the record companies um here's and this is you know I, i don't have a record contract but uh, you know, when you sign a contract uh, with a company that's funding, you know, the things that you're doing, it's really hard unless you have, you know, specific language in that contract to 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 have total autonomy over the things that you're doing. So is it wrong? Uh, I can say probably not wrong, but it could be, you know, it could be distasteful or it could be, you know, I mean, just, you know, asking your artist to do things that they're not comfortable with or or whatever is 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 just I, I just i don't know i think it it just creates animosity and just makes it it makes the product not as good i think it should be even cover songs can be organic you know i mean um if if you know a band comes to together and they say well we want to cover you know whatever or we want to play the song or we work it or whatever and and it and it and it's it 
it sounds good and, and everybody's digging it and into it. I think that's cool. But, you know, I mean, I guess I guess it's not wrong, but I think it, it can probably not be. I think if a record company wants a band to do anything that they're not comfortable doing, it's probably not a great idea. But then again, I'm speaking. I don't have any. I've never had a record contract. So is it a good compromise for bands to work with factory songwriters like Hart, Bon Jovi and Aerosmith did in the 80s, like Desmond Child and Holly Knight? Uh, um, go ahead, Chad. No, I was That's just going to say, I think probably 99% of bands do work with writers. I mean, I listened to a Desmond Child interview on a podcast last month, and I had no idea that he wrote all of the songs that he actually did over the years. I mean, he got Bon Jovi their biggest hits when they started out, Kiss. Uh, there's a lot of pop songs that I never knew he wrote. And, you know, so a lot of these bands wouldn't be where they're at without him, I think, you know, and a lot of these ghost writers. Uh, and I know that's big in the country music scene now, too. I mean, probably nine out of 10 top 10 hits nowadays are not written by the artist. Did these bands sell out? I don't think so, because, I mean, you're in the business to make money, you know, if you're on a record label and out touring. So, I mean, the key is to get the biggest song you can out to the biggest, you know, audience you can. And if you have a guy that can or a girl that can write it uh, and get it where it needs to be, I mean, that's, you know, that's the end game unless you're not doing it, you know, to be known worldwide. Justin, will you ever belt out All I Want to Do is Make Love to You live? Oh, I would in a heartbeat. I love that song. Um, I remember I bought I bought the tape that heart. Uh, tape of course when i when i bought it and then heard the song i loved the song i, I just loved the melody because i definitely it when it come out like 1989 probably yeah brigade um yeah brigade yeah mm-hmm. and uh my dad was is a big heart fan he loves uh ann wilson's voice and loves watching nancy play guitar and uh so i, I remember that video being on on mtv and i love that song of course i had no idea what it was about yeah it was a serious um, video wasn't it i remember yeah. it was like them driving around in a, in the rain well you go back now and you listen to it and she's she's hooking up with some d- dude to get pregnant <laughs> I mean, yeah it's- yeah and things it's disgusting i think it's a statement it was banned in ireland you know it, p- I can see where she think would think it's disgusting, but I mean, in that situation, you know, I mean, people people make you know they make very serious and intense you know decisions in their life about things. So, but I just just uh, the the song I, I I'm a I love heart. So I mean, uh, not that I could do the song justice, but you know, if the guys wanted to do all I want to do is make love to you, I'd, I'd give it a go. See what happens, right, Nate? Oh, we definitely would. Yeah. Every time you go away, singer Paul Young was big in the 80s and early 90s. In the past five years, his soulful, velvety voice has turned into nails on a chalkboard. He screeches through the Hollow Notes cover and all of the songs in his set list. Is it time for Paul Young to hang it up, Justin? Um, it's really bad. I, I watched the video you sent me, um, and, it's, and it. it's it's not that I, I wouldn't, you know, I'm not going to tell anybody they should hang it up because that's that's in each person's decision, and then we can all sit and and with social media now we can go through and why, and you know, in the last six months I've watched Vince Neil, John Bon Jovi, uh, Shania Twain, uh, a lot of uh, you know, singers from eras long ago sing things that don't sound well and personally i think that's why you're seeing and 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 why you're seeing the proliferation of cover acts and tribute bands is because these songs are so great but we're getting long past you know where a time where the people who originally did them can can still perform them really well but people still love to hear those songs so i think that that's you know that's why you know, the stuff that we're doing, the stuff that the hair supply and just bands, you know, I see bands come across Facebook and social media. And I mean, you'll get like, um, I think it was last summer up at Adelphia and Marietta, there was like three nineties, um, cover acts and they were all each a separate tribute. It was like rage against the machine STP 
and somebody else and they were tribute bands and uh you know these bands are really good um at what they do and 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 they get a good crowd because people want to come. They one, they don't have to pay five hundred dollars to maybe hear or see a subpar performance or a thousand. Uh, and 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 the the tracks are done really well. So, should he hang it up? That's uh, up to him. I mean, you know, or just, ultimately, or just get a vocal coach. Uh, you know, there's something to be said too. I've been in bands, you know, where where people you know they think well let's let's tune down a half step it'll make it easier on on your voice and and things of that nature and you know but when you take away the original aesthetic of the song you know sometimes it's more than just seeing the person that actually did it and hearing some semblance of the song that you love it's it's, some people just want to hear the song in a live setting so a vocal coach i i would go out on a limb to say that most of these singers have a vocal coach and that they they use the vocal coach and sometimes you know when you get into your 60s and 70s i mean sometimes you don't you don't have that high range anymore and and no amount of coaching is really going to bring it back so you gotta you know work to take care of your voice i mean my voice has changed a lot since my 20s but i'd like to think that i've taken somewhat care of it and and i need to start taking better care of it so nathan who did you model your drum playing after uh yeah, I wouldn't say I model it after any one person. It's just a bunch of different influences over the years. And I like a lot of different kind of players. Cher recently filed for a conservatorship of her son, Elijah Blue, due to him, and I quote, currently unable to manage his assets due to severe mental health and substance abuse issue. Was Cher wrong to stick her nose into her son's life? That's a great question for you to answer, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, there might be some behind the scenes stuff going on that we don't know about, but I don't know. His, his daddy, Greg Allman, he was um, quite the druggie back in the day. Yeah. I just gather Cher doesn't want to see her son go down the same rabbit hole daddy did. That could be true. Yeah, she might know a lot that the public does not know on that situation and maybe by trying to be uh, proactive instead of reactive. Oh, nice. Did any of you get to see West Virginia singer songwriter Sierra Farrah perform Fox Hunt on Jimmy Kimmel Live last week? Yes, I, I watched it. What'd you think? Um, I think Sierra is incredibly talented. Uh, her her style of country is not not something that I listen to quite a bit. But I did think that that whatever that tune, you know, that tune. I think it's a, her new single. Um, it it had a lot of rhythm to it. I, I was tapping my foot a little bit to it. So uh, I thought the performance was fantastic, and it, it was, was awesome to see. Off. Yeah, absolutely. And that that's kind of the shtick. I think. I think you know that's kind of the kind of you know the shtick that they're doing. She's kind of like a kind of like pulling this modern day Loretta Lynn, which I think is is cool. And the performance was great and I thought the song was good. And it was cool seeing a a Charleston girl, uh, you know, being being on Jimmy Kimmel. The past decade saw juicy memoirs by the likes of Grace Jones, Bruce Springsteen, Ruth Pointer, Steve LeCather, and Debbie Harry. Out of those artists who would y'all like to see a movie based on those uh, tell-alls? Mm. I said Bruce just Springsteen about this the other day. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Um, I don't feel like he would be honest, though. Something tells me he wouldn't be honest. I read Ruth Pointer's memoir a few years back, and she was. Her book made me laugh. It made me cry. She talked about hallucinations she had while under the influence. She and her husband thought that their house was infested with rats and she didn't know if it was the crack or what have you. Yeah. Um, but it was, I don't know. I just thought I, I like Probably these the crack. stuff. Yeah. I just like <laughs> these juicy memoirs and Anita's Anita pointers. She wrote a memoir with her brother a few years afterwards because she hated Ruth's book so bad. <laughs> <laughs> she 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 uh, released a watered down version of the Pointer Sisters' antics. Oh, so wow. I figured if you take Ruth's book and Anita's book, you merge them, maybe a great movie of the week. I don't know. Yeah, 
2023, the world lost some of the greatest singers and musicians of our generation. Tina Turner and Sinead O'Connor's death stung the worst for me. We also lost Jimmy Buffett, Gary Wright, Robbie Robertson, Harry Belafonte, Steve Hartwell of Smash Mouth, The Pogues, Shane McGowan, David Crosby of The Birds, and Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, Burt Bacharach, and legendary sax player Mars Williams, who played with the Waitresses and Psychedelic Furs. Whose deaths impacted you all the most last year? Last year? I don't know how much I would say impacted, but I mean, you know, watching somebody, you know, seeing somebody like Tina Turner pass away. And then I think a lot of, for me, a lot of it is when you, you hear of certain people who have passed, you know, that are artists and then you, you start to hear people talk about them or post or memoriams or whatever, where, you know, they, it, it shows you their body of work. And I, I think then, I think for anything, it's just one of those things where it's, you know, you, you just start to realize that, you know, time, time marches on and, you know, life is long, but it's also very short. And, uh, but, uh, Tina was, Tina was, it, I wouldn't say it hit me hard, but, you know, I'm trying to think, um, uh, you know, Robbie Robertson, uh, of, you know, of the band, uh, just just usually influential people man and when they're gone they're gone and then then you realize that even though there may be other stars and other artists and, and things of that nature that that are very influential you know there's still a piece of the pie that, that that's gone that, and you realize that they'll never they'll never release new music and, and that what you have is is what you have and that's their legacy so i mean for me i mean i don't know about the rest of the guys but chad nathan y'all want to chime in Man, nobody on that list. I mean, you know, a few years back, Eddie Van Halen was a huge one for me. Um, that's still hard to believe that one of the ultimate guitar gods is, you know, gone. I did get to see him live once, which was cool, but um, it sucks I won't be able to meet him, though. I always try to meet all the heroes guitar-wise that, you know, that were huge influences. Uh, but I did get to see him in concert, and I do have his autograph, so that's cool. Nathan. I asked Justin and Chad this the last time, but I already know their picks. Who do you want to see in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that's not already there? I'm not sure. I'm I'm not even. I don't even know who didn't get in or whatever. I don't even really think about it. I'm just gonna say this again. It's a travesty that Chris Cornell is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in some way shape or form that's it i don't care who else gets in from here on out until chris cornell gets in the rock roll hall of fame justin is it possible to be a good musician and be completely and totally sober yeah absolutely like for your whole life no just playing music uh yeah yeah i think so i think um absolutely i think so yeah i mean for the most part i'm i'm pretty sober I'm pretty sober now, and I think just about everybody in the band's pretty sober for the most part. I mean, I mean, if you're talking about like not touching anything, but I think you know, you know, I know we, you know, we can have vices like you know alcohol and drugs and things of that nature, but you know, you can also throw food in there and and, and just taking care of yourself and your body. Period. I don't think that you have to be blasted out of your mind to write a great song. I don't think you even have to, I don't think you have to be depressed and in despair. I know a lot of great music comes from that stuff, but I don't think that it's a requirement or necessary to do that. Chad, does Rwanda Walkman have any dates beyond your February 17th Blue Parrot show plans? Uh, uh, we have one date booked so far, but we probably won't announce that till later on in the spring. But the plan is to uh, definitely add more, and we've had some good offers so far. We're just trying to get this first show out of the way to uh, get everything lined out and, um, you know, kind of start from scratch with it and move forward. So what new music are you guys listening to at the moment? Uh, man, that's a tough one. Um, I got into a new band recently when I saw them open up for Kiss a few months ago. It's actually... Uh, Paul Stanley's son, Evan's new band called Amber Wild, and he's the uh, vocalist and rhythm guitar player, and they are really, really, really good. Uh, this is their first tour opening up for Kiss on Kiss's farewell tour. 
uh, and they have some really cool songs with some cool melodies and choruses and just some good straight up rock stuff that i've been into a lot is kiss really going to retire uh yeah i believe so yeah i believe so because i think it goes back to the thing you were talking about the voice deal you know and those guys are like 70 years old and a lot of these people that have voice issues too like paul stanley from kiss they've had surgery uh and it's just not the same again and you know like you said these guys are getting older and then plus with a vocal surgery on top of that it's just you know you can't do the same thing you used to do but yeah they went to the extremes this time with everything and i really think that uh they're done touring i think they said that they might you know the band's not over but just the touring band's over so they've got the avatars coming out in 27 and different things like that so i think they'll do basically everything but tour i want to thank my special guests rewind the walkman's chad fisher nathan shrewsbury and justin johnson for coming on the mothman and the bible belt podcast to discuss their music and their first live show as a band oddly enough a day after we recorded the interview it was announced that heart and cheap trick are playing the charleston coliseum on august 23rd i cannot confirm whether or not all I want to do is make love to you will make the set. I'm guessing not, but I'm sure that show, just like Rewind the Walkman's February 17th show, will be killer. MIA bassist Jamie Skeen promised he'd do the podcast at a later date. He's the guy behind that intro and outro music for the Mothman and the Bible Belt podcast. Rewind the Walkman is on Facebook and YouTube. For Mothman and the Bible Belt podcast outlet updates, guest bios, episode breakdowns, and links to social media, please check us out on the web at www.mothmanandthebiblebelt.com. Thanks for listening.